Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. How are you doing today? We are back for episode number three with the Lumberjack Landlord, or Matt. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing awesome, Mike. Still here. There you go. Hey, <laughs> uh, I don't know if you saw this. I was sent this video uh, 10 or 11 times in the last week. That people have asked me to do a reaction <laughs> video to a video called California is Destroying the U.S. Housing Market. Catchy title. Um, doesn't sound wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, the, t- the title is the title is on, dude. The guy's the guy's thumbnail is on point. He, he's <clears> clearly <throat> creative. Uh, I do think I think the title is thought provoking. What mm-hmm. I want to do with you, because obviously we're on different coasts, sure. is I actually think you could take that story or thought and say, "Is California and New York residents mm-hmm. destroying your local real estate market?" I know you mm-hmm. have some experience with this. Um, I do. So why don't we talk about it? I will do a reaction video because for heaven forbid, I took a page of notes, but mm-hmm. I just want to talk about the theory because again, I, I think the idea is interesting. I may disagree or agree with this gentleman's points, but I just mm-hmm. want to talk about the idea with you because you haven't seen the video. So what do you think? What are those darn New Yorkers doing in your market? Um, it's even more, cl- it's even more close than that. It's, and we have a, a polite name for them. We call them mass holes. Mass- <laughs> yeah. 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 It's true. Um, a lot of that money came across the border. A lot of it, a lot, a lot of it. And so, you know, you've got some towns just outside of Boston, you know, where a, you know, three bed, two bath is a $700,000 home. Okay. And if they were willing to move an hour North, that was a $450,000 home. Hmm. And then it was worth five and then it was worth six. And now that stuff is six and a half. And then that same stuff in mass had gone up because people were trying to get into those parts of the market there. So we've seen it. We've seen it a lot at the bigger, um, the bigger area that we've seen it the most, Mike, is we have a lot of lakes in New Hampshire that mm-hmm. are very desirable. Mm-hmm. And the property price is kind of like uh, Anna with our Airbnb and oceanfront stuff. Yeah. Off the charts, off the charts. Interesting. Yeah, so off the charts. So when I think about this, right, I, you know, I think it's an interesting mental gymnastics, right? Because you think about the New Yorker, the, I think when you say mass holes, that's Massachusetts, right? It is. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So it's a Massachusetts yep. money it coming, was coming to your lot. area. Yep. So, uh, you know, I think there's a, I, I just, again, I think it's a very interesting topic. I think the data probably supports it, right? Because what happens in Massachusetts mm-hmm. or California is you likely sell a high priced asset. Yep. You probably, if you've been in it for five years or more, sure. you're probably sitting yep. on 40%, 50%, yep. 60% exactly. appreciation. Exactly. So you exit that thing with a bunch of cash. That's right. You then go to a new market and you probably can pay cash. If not get a, you know, a loan at 50% in Correct. the new market. Correct. Lowering your monthly expenses. Correct. Um, so, so I get it. I'm curious though, let's talk about the lake analogy. Yeah, sure. Do you think they are buying for permanent residency or do you think these are second homes? Um, Yes. So there are some cases where it is because there's a lot of lakes around here that do have that. We had a lot of people come from New York during COVID and stay here. Right, but is that permanent you think? Or do you think that's, they're going to go back to New York in a year or whatever? I think- I think that some have gone back. Okay. A lot are going to still be here for the summer. We'll know a lot more in kind of September. Okay. Um, but, you know, I grew up in a beach town. Yeah. <clears throat> Not the nice part. <laughs> uh, but I grew, up, I grew up in a beach town. It was like, you could tell as soon as Memorial Day hit, because all of a sudden the growth, everything was packed, yeah. 45 minutes to do three miles. Um, but the biggest thing is, is that I looked at the last three deals that I did, and all three of them were out of state purchasers. Mm. zero of the three one of them the woman was qualified for 600 she couldn't find anything and so she paid 305k cash for mine oh and which was was brilliant brilliant on her part is that a rental for her do you think or is she living there nope and that was a crazy thing it was a five bedroom two bath house that a single woman bought and again to live in it sounds like to live in yeah not to rent to live in yeah she might she might decide that might decide to hack Maybe. But, you know, we, we had that one that was, you know, like I said, she's approved for six. She couldn't find anything in that range whatsoever. Yeah. So she literally said, you know what, what can I get for cash? Like kind of in the same area. And she did, she bought for three Oh five and boom done. And she was approved for six. Yeah. So the other thing I think about when I look at this is 
if you were an owner already, as you were in that example, sure. You know, I, I get the feeling that, yeah, the, the, the big money coming in, especially small towns like Reno and Boise and these other areas, sure. if they, if they get just even a trickle of California or in this example, Massachusetts, All money, off the charts, it yeah. just explodes. Right. So it does, but there, there's another side to that. There is a seller, the seller of that Boise or Reno, or yes. in your case there, you, you get, an extra cream, right? You got a little bit of extra money that you would not have gotten otherwise. Correct. A lot of those folks, honestly, you know, some are friends of mine. A lot of them have moved into rentals. Right. So they're selling at the peak and coming. Selling to- at the peak, moving into a rental and just saying, yep, I will take all of that money. Because I mean, you're literally talking about the towns that I'm in, you know, and they're called cities. So they're not towns, but the cities that I'm in are small, Mike. They are 30,000 people, 35,000 people, 28,000 people. It doesn't so, take much to inflate that. Yeah. Nope. And that's the thing is it, it's in, it inflated very, very, very fast. Yeah. Because think about that, right? Again, I'm trying to play this out, right? So 30,000 people in any one time, there's only 300, 400 homes available. Listed. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. Usually 30,000. We're usually yeah. about two, 250 or so, 250 yeah. homes available. And right now we have 30. So what happens in that environment is the person with the biggest check wins. That's right. That's right. Well, and that was, that was the reason for us to sell what we sold because the affordability index, Yeah. you know, we had the equivalent of a seven. Yeah. So that's where I want to go next. And probably last on this topic is I think there's, I have historical experience and I can only pick on California because that's where I live and, and most of my network is. But generally speaking, California investors, when they go out of area, Mm -hmm. are horrible. And what I mean by horrible is they're just bad investors. I I know people that have sold Midwest turnkey rentals that when they see a 408 or a 415 or a 949 or whatever the local area codes are, they jack up the price. (laughs) They've told me. That's awesome. I've never heard that before. They, They jack up the price because they know our California brains can't yeah we'll pay more right oh look at that nice tutor home that i see online yeah. you don't realize that you know the house across the street sold for half the price or whatever it is so and if you're doing if you're doing yeah. your work i mean you're saying this is where the doing your work every exactly. single day and being hyper local it's hyper local yes yeah you've got to do the work because again folks i think there is historical precedent precedent for california investors to be lazy to yes. Uh, take their California. A lot of Californians think the rest of the country appreciates like California. It doesn't. Not even close. Not mm-hmm. even. Cl- I mean, go look at the ch- like. I mean, the ch- <clears throat> most charts are like, like up with inflation. You know, California has cycles, right? That you can play. So again, I think California investors. I don't know Massachusetts, but generally speaking, we've proven to uh, overpay. Yeah, California really big boom bust. Big big boom bust. Like when you were talking about your Fresno deal. Mm-hmm. You know, you buy it for 106, it sells for like 260, and then it sells back to the bank for 75. Exactly. And now it's back on the market for 260. Exactly. Like that that doesn't ha- that doesn't happen here or hasn't in the past. I'm interested yeah. to see if this influx of money and people with different market mentalities. Exactly. I'm interested to see if that changes it. But there was a there was a beach that we were looking to get access to. We were looking to buy on that. When we were looking, the price range was about a million dollars. And I was like, you know, it's just, I feel like it's too much of a financial commitment, you know, based on us trying to grow the business. And so we didn't do it. And now that same house uh, sold now five years later for 2.6. Oops. Yeah. I mean, I'm an yeah. idiot. Whatever. Yeah. Missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing is, and, and the crazy yeah. thing is, is that, is that going to carry because it doesn't carry for anything other than a personal residence because the rental can't support that. Yeah, no, not even so close. Sure. So that's, that's where I'm going with this last conversation is, is there's a lot of, a lot of people are looking at the last crisis, which California yeah. investors played in. We just, we, we really did. We were investors in other areas and then we yeah. vacated when the deals went bad. Yep. Right. Sure. California investors. I mean, I heard banks say it, right. They didn't single sure. out California investors, but they basically said, Hey, investors with multiple properties, you're the problem. Right. And I know some of them, they bought properties in Mississippi and Texas and other areas mm-hmm. that when it went bad, they just let them all go. Yeah. I think that's different this time because I, I think what's mm-hmm. happening this time is we're actually having migration, right? The person who sells the LA 
or the ba- San Francisco or the Bay Area home, they're moving to Texas yes. or Vegas or Reno or whatever. So it's not that they won't move back, but it's not an investment house. And it's certainly not a dozen investment houses. So Mm-mm. I'm not sure there's the same connection, I guess. No, I, I agree with you. I don't think there are, I don't think there is either. Cause I think that, you know, for, for me, I'm such a, you know, I'm so lame when I was buying those houses, I was actually using a real loan. You know, <laughs> I, I was, I was, I was, I was stating income like a jerk, <laughs> Yeah, you know, what are we and, thinking? Yeah. I'm really like, like, why didn't I get any of those really cheap garbage loans? What the hell, exactly. you know? And so that's the thing is, I think that's what's, I think that's the biggest difference. And at this point, you know, every crisis looks different and every market changes and shifts. So to be using all those numbers, you know, like all the people I I've seen a whole lot fewer videos on the number of people in forbearance, Mike, Yeah, in the too. last four weeks, Yeah, because it's now below 2 million. It's dropped 15 weeks in a row. Yeah. And here's a really interesting number, Mike, this number absolutely blew me away. Do you know what percentage of people got into forbearance and still made their monthly mortgage payment? Oh, I have no idea. Take a wild stab because I've got the number and it's what? absurd. Oh, I was going to say 25%, but now I got to go higher 40%. No, Mike, you nailed it. 25%. Oh, I did. All right. No, Mike, you did it. 25% of people were still paying their mortgage in forbearance. One in four. Wow. So number one, hey, dumb government, you don't lay something out there and let people take advantage of it if they don't need it. With a click of a mouse. Yeah, I think I need that. Yeah, right. And number two is 25% of people were still making their mortgage payments. And so Mike, what's that forbearance chunk going to look like? Like they're going to get, like the government's going to work something out and give them probably a 0% loan tacked onto their mortgage. And all they did over the last year was pay down their principal. Oh, a year. Oh my word. God. It's like a strategic, it's like a strategic foreclosure. Yeah. Yeah. The, the new word is avoidable foreclosure. Avoidable foreclosure. Yeah. See, we didn't have those here. It was, it was, it really kind of sucked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So again, I do think there is some, I, again, I think the title, right? California's is destro- California and I'll throw in New York yeah, and Massachusetts sure. is destroying sure. the U S housing market. I think that's an interesting twist. I think destroying is a little too over the top yeah, because I, I think agree. it's I, agree. I think it's different this time. I think I think we were bad actors last time, not on purpose, but it just turned out because we were buying dozens of I'll just pick on Ohio or Michigan sure. homes. And then because we were investors and our deal went bad, we let them go. Right. I think this time, generally speaking, people are picking up and moving their families. They are. Yep. And I think that's a different behavior. You you generally speaking treat your home, your nest differently than you treat some out-of-state investment. So I don't think the same behavior is going to happen. No. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't disagree with that. I think that, I think, and I think some people are here to stay. I think some people realize that New Hampshire might just be too simple for them. <laughs> I like simple, yeah, Me too. you know? And yeah. so they, you know, some people might just be like, Nope, I need the hustle and bustle, you know, like yeah. our convenience stores close at 10 o'clock or nine o'clock. Oh. And yeah, like that's not, not a 24 seven. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, our store 24 isn't 24 hours. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so it, you have to go and and like eat, like in the wintertime, what's really funny, I'll digress real quickly. In the wintertime, what's really funny is that if you are on a diesel fuel for your house, you know, when you're for your heating system and you need to jumpstart it because they ran out of oil because they forgot to order it or because the drop off wasn't done. There is literally one place within 10 miles for me to get that fuel. I know exactly where I have to go. Ah. So I literally store 10 gallons all winter long, just in case, just in case but that's go. what we're talking. That's what we're done with. So I think that, I think that that formation of homes here and people moving here, I think a number of them will stay. I think some of them will go back home when it gets back to normal, but I think that they're probably going to wait it out a little bit because there's still places that are just, just opening up Like California just opened up yesterday, right? Today. Today. Oh, Today. well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's, again, today. I don't, so I love this idea. Again, I think that's a very interesting concept. I will review that reaction video later in the day, I think, but I do think it's different this time where I don't, I don't think the Californians that move to other areas, I don't think they're going to just let things go. Mm -mm, No, no. And I think the, I I think he, I think he hit the nail on the head too, which is this is where the owner rock thing, right? So the banks do kind of have it right. The owner rock is there. Yeah. They didn't buy five of these things. Exactly. Because like we saw with all- 90%, exactly. yeah. Yep, yep. 
Yep. For, for some reason, you know, a bartender owned five homes. Yeah. Oh, what? The, the classic example and, and uh, what was that movie called the big short big short the, the strippers big short the stripper <laughs> strippers only five homes yeah or valet guys only oh, four yeah. homes oh yeah yeah, yeah. like it's crazy crazy yeah there's Dude, a bubble there's a bubble there's a bubble yeah get out now <laughs> yes. all right man well this has been a great three episodes i really appreciate you how Happy can people give me a part of your world lumberjacklandlord.com on uh just on the web and then lumberjack landlord on youtube and uh, part of your course, One Rental at a Time, we do the house hackology and creating hackologists yeah, all that, around the world that, with, uh, with the house hack program. That brand new section is going to create millionaires all by itself. And you put that together so. with the mindset, it's, uh, it's going to be pretty cool, man. So thank you Here's very much. Here's all I know. It created one. It That's created one. <laughs> <laughs> it worked once so far. There you so. go. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, brother. Thanks, Mike.